the purpose of this um, short uh, slide pack is to go over algebraic division. And in order to understand algebraic division, it's important to make the parallel with dividing numbers. And most students are really at ease with doing short division, like the example at the top here. And what you need to do here is you actually need to um, make sure you're familiar with how to do long division. So what's the link between the two? When you do your division of uh, 1,458 divided by 3, so what you do here is you always consider your first two numbers because well, the 3 doesn't go into 1, so how many times is 3 going into 14? It's 4 times, and then you do 3 times 4 is 12, but I had 14, so I've got a remainder of 2. And you write your remainder of 2 um, in small at the top here, so that you can now work with not the 5, but 25, because you have a remainder of 2. Well, if you do a long division, the thinking is sort of the same, except that we're going to write the subtraction that's taking place out. So, how many times does 3 goes into uh, 14? Well, 4 times, which is why we write the 4 at the same place. But this time, when we do 3 times 4 is 12, instead of directly doing the subtraction of a 14 take away 12, we're going to write it out. So, 3 times 4 is 12, you write your 12 underneath, and then you check by doing, well, 14 take away 12, and you've got a remainder of 2. At this stage, you then bring the 5 down. So the 25 that's visible at the corner here in the first division um, is the same as the 25 that is underneath here. It's just a way to lay it out more. Um, so when you're going to do your algebraic division, you're going to have the same thought process. So let's look at the division uh, in the middle first. So the lead term here, the term with highest coefficient, is 2x cubed. And you need to divide it by x minus 2. So you are first going to focus on this x. So 2x cubed divided by x, what is left? Well, 2x squared. Because if you have 2x squared multiplied by x, that gives you a 2x cubed. So you found your first term. Now you're going to need to multiply out and write it underneath. So 2x squared multiplied by x is 2x cubed. So I write my 2x cubed under the 2x cubed aligning like terms. And then 2x squared multiplied by minus 2 gives me minus 4x squared. I have now written out um, the first part of the division, and what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to check what's the remainder for this first round, in a way. So I'm going to need to subtract 2x cubed minus 4x squared from 2x cubed minus 3x squared. So 2x cubed minus 2x cubed, those they cancel out, they are gone. Minus 3x squared, take away minus 4x squared. So if we take away a negative, it gives me a positive. So I'm going to end up having a positive 1x squared. And the next stage, like if you had numbers, you then use this for the next part of your, your number. So here the 5 that you bring down, we're going to do the same. We're going to bring the plus x down. And we do a second cycle. So we now have x squared plus x. Well, how many x from uh, the divisor, how many x goes into x squared? Well, actually, that would be 1x, so plus x. Because if we have x times x gives me x squared. And x times minus 2x gives me, sorry, x times minus 2 gives me minus 2x. Once I've done this, I can now prepare my subtraction. So I'm going to need to subtract uh, the second terms from the first one. The x squared I cancel, x squared take away x squared, this is gone. And then we're going to have x take away minus 2x. We take away a negative, it's the same as adding 2x, the result is 3x. If you have your 3x, you can now bring down the minus 6. And you need to do your third round. So how many x goes into 3x? Well, that's, I need a plus 3. We're going to multiply it out now. 3 times x is 3x. And 3 times minus 2 is minus 6. You've done your calculation. 
we can now subtract it. So 3x take away 3x, those are cancelled. Minus 6 take away minus 6 gives you 0. So the result of 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus x minus 6 divided by um, x minus 2 is 2x squared plus x plus 3. So what you need to do now is to have a go at the um, division on the right hand side and then when you're done um, look at the next slides and I've got the work solution.
And here you see a solution for the question from a previous slide. Um, if you have not um, reached the same result as mine, if you didn't get the same results, then take the time to actually check line by line to see where your error is. And you might want to have a go at just doing this operation again. It's a matter of getting the hang of them, but it's important to find exactly uh, where your mistake was. Now, before we move to next slides and the factors theorem, which is a big user of this technique, um, one thing to, to keep in mind, um, it's about rewriting what we math teacher called uh, uh, number sentences, so here algebraic sentences. So if we were to write 56 divided by 7, then we know that the result is 8, it's just basic timetable. But this is also equivalent, so this means that if we have 56 divided by 8 would be equal to 7. And more importantly, that tells us that if we have 7 multiplied by 8, then the result is 56. So in terms of our algebraic division, what does it mean? Well, it means that if we know that 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 2x minus 9 uh, divided by x plus 1 is equals to 2x squared plus 7x minus 9, then this is equivalent. We also know that we can rewrite that as a multiplication. So we know then that this result of 2x squared plus 7x minus 9, if we multiply it by x plus 1, then what's the result? Well, the result is what we started from. 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 2x minus 9. And this is the beauty and the main reason for doing algebraic division, is because suddenly this allows you to write a cubic um, expression into the product of a quadratic expression and a linear term. So this, in other words, if you find the right a linear term to divide by, if you know to divide by x plus 1, then you can factorize your cubic. And if you can factorize your cubic, then you can solve it. And this is of great importance. From this point in the slide pack, we're going to go through a factors theorem. So on this slide, I'm explaining a little bit what it's about. And then there are a number of uh, exam questions with their work solutions that I'm going to go through. Um, so first of all, what is this factor theorem about? Well, the, the example we're using on this slide is going to be the division you have done on the previous slide. And I'm going to use that as a reference. Um, so what does it mean if x plus 1 is a factor of 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 2x minus 9? Well, what about if, you, if you're not too sure, what about thinking about, um, so... Uh, 5 is a factor of 45. What does that mean? What does 5 being a factor of 45 mean? Well, it really means that there is a number, 5 can be multiplied by a number and gives you 45. So obviously this number is 9, but that's what the factor being a factor means. So the implication, if you think about factors algebraically, well, if when you divide uh, 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 2x minus 9 by x plus 1, the result is 2x squared plus 7x minus 9, as we have done on the free previous page, then this means that you can rewrite your cubic as 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 2x minus 9 is equals to x plus 1 multiplied by 2x squared plus 7x minus 9. So in general, if you have something is a factor of an expression, this means that you can actually rewrite the expression as x plus 1 times another polynomial. Um, the second thing that it means is if, it's a, if x plus 1 is a factor, then it means that if you divide f of x by x plus 1, the remainder will be 0. And the third one, which is going to become very, very convenient, is it also means that if x plus 1 is a factor, so it's important to remember, x plus 1 is a factor, then that means that if you substitute none, not plus 1, but minus 1, 
in your cubic in the exp in, in the equation the expression, I should say, um, you get zero. So why is that? If we go back to this uh, initial question that we had, so we've done a division by x plus 1, we have a result of 2x squared plus 7x minus 9, so we can rewrite 2x cubed plus 9x squared minus 2x minus 9 um, as a product of x plus 1 and then a quadratic 2x squared plus 7x minus 9. So what happens here? If we wanted to solve now our cubic, once it's factorized, it's quite easy because we know that we actually have x equals minus 1 or you solve the quadratic. And as it happened here, um, when you solve it, one of the, one of the solution is going to be 1, um, but it's, it's, um, it's a separate solution from here. So I'm just going to keep it as you would need to solve the quadratic and you would find your three solutions. So if x plus 1 is a factor, this means that x minus 1 is a root. Well, if you do it backward, if x minus 1 is a root, what it means is that if you substitute minus 1 into your expression, then you're going to get zero. So if you substitute it in the factorized expression, yeah, so if you, if you substitute um, minus 1, you get zero. So, of course, if you substitute it in the expression that is not factorized, you get the same result. So this is the same. Um, if you substitute... x with minus 1, of course you also get 0. You get the same result. And this is going to be very, very handy when you need to factorize your quadratic. Because the factors theorem, the biggest um, benefit of it is it will allow you to factorize and um, to factorize those cubics so that you can solve them. But then the question is, the trick is, how do you know to divide by x plus 1 and not x plus 2, x plus 3, or x minus 5, or x plus 5, or whatever? Well, you are going to need to first find a solution to your equation. And quite often, you're going to need to do that by trial and error. So just trying a number of, of numbers. In exam questions, sometimes they tell you which number to use. Sometimes they don't. If they don't, then you could use your table function on your calculator. You put your cubic in and then you put uh, your table function going from, I don't know, minus 10 to 10. And check whether one of these values will give you um, a result of zero. Once you have found a solution, so in that case here we found a solution as being uh, minus 1. So this writing has gone over uh, what I had written earlier. If you actually get that minus 1 is a solution, then your factor is x plus 1. Yeah? Remember to change the sign. The reason for this is when you're solving, you need to change the sign. But the best thing to do now is to look through a few examples. Uh, I'm not going to talk through all of them because it would take too long. Um, but, but do take a look at them and have a go at them. Okay, to start with uh, what should be a reasonably straightforward question once you know how to do that. So you're given a, this time it's not a cubic, it's a quadric, so you have got an order 4, which is partially defined because you have x to the power 4 plus ax minus 6. But you're given this key information that x minus 2 is a factor. What does it mean? So if x minus 2 is a factor, So it means that your x to the power of 4 plus ax minus 6 can be written as x minus 2 multiplied by something else. So really it means that if you have x equals positive 2, then f of x would be 0. And really I should write that as f of minus 2 equals 0. So you need to substitute x for minus 2. So what do we have here? We have minus 2 to the power of 4 plus a times minus 2 
minus 6, and you know that this is equal to 0. So minus 2 to the power of 4, the minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4, and then squared, so that gives you 16. Minus 2a minus 6 equals 0. So I'm going to move 2a on the other side. So 2a equals 16, take away 6 is 10. So you have a equals 5. And you have finished, you've bent three marks. Okay, let's go through the two the first two parts of this question. Verify that x equals minus 4 is a root of f of x equals 0. So what does this really mean is they want us to calculate the value of f of minus 4. They want us to substitute x for minus 4 into the expression. So you have 2 times minus 4 to the power of 3 plus 7 times minus 4 squared minus 7 times minus 4 and minus 12. Okay, so uh, 4 cubed is 64. So minus 4 cubed is minus 64 times 2 minus 132. So 7 times plus 7 times 16 plus 28 minus 12. And then from here, we need to put it in your calculator. And if you put that in your calculator, you can pause and try it. Then what do you get? Your magic zero. So from here, verify that x equals minus 4 is a root. Um, so and from here, don't forget to conclude. Therefore, um, minus 4 is a root. Always remember to conclude of f of x equals zero. If you don't conclude, then the examiner can interpret this as you didn't know what to do next, you didn't know you had reached the conclusion. So always conclude. So next part here, so far you've got two marks. So now we have uh, four marks. So what are we going to need to do? Well, if minus four is a root, so minus four is a root, you can use your factors theorem. So this means it's equivalent to have x add 4 is a factor. So if x add 4 is a factor, then you're going to need to do an algebraic division. So from here, I hope I'm going to have enough space. Um, 2x cubed plus 7x squared minus 7x minus 12 can be divided by x add 4. Remember to change sign. And then so we can, from here, we can then divide. So we've got 2x cubed and we're dividing by x plus 4. So I'm going to need to start by having a 2x squared because 2x squared times x gives me 2x cubed. And 2x squared times 4 gives me plus 8x squared. And I'm going to need to subtract and find my remainder. So those x cubed have cancelled. 7x squared minus 8x squared gives me minus 1x squared. Watch the signs. And I'm bringing the minus 7x down. So now I've got a minus x squared as my leading term. And I'm going to divide that by x plus 4. So to get rid of this minus x squared, I'm going to need to have a minus x. Minus x times x gives me minus x squared. Minus x times 4 gives me uh, minus 4x. And I'm going to need to subtract. And straight away, I know to be careful because I'm going to have a lot of double negatives here. If I've got a negative x squared, and I take away another negative x squared. Those have cancelled. If I've got negative 7x and I take away a negative 4x, it's the same as negative 7x or to which you add uh, 4x, so the result is negative 3x. And you bring the 12 down, so minus 12. Uh, I've got minus 3x as my lead term, and I divide that by x plus 4. So I really need to divide by minus 3. Minus 3 times x is minus 3x. Minus 3 times 4 is minus 12. And then when I subtract here, I get zero and a remainder of zero. If I did not have a remainder of zero, I knew I would have had a problem and an error somewhere. Because if x plus 4 is a factor, then your remainder must be zero. 
I have done the algebraic um, uh, division. I need to make sure now I answer the question. They want me to factorize fully. So I can start by writing f of x equals um, x plus 4 multiplied by the result I got at the top here. So 2x squared minus x minus 3. Have I factorized fully? No. I have factorized your first term, your x plus 4, but then I need to factorize my quadratic. So I need to be careful to factorize the quadratic properly. I don't know if I have shown you how to do this formally. Uh, so I'm going to change color and I'm going to do it on this side in case it's useful. So I'm going to do it here. If you want to factorize now uh, 2x squared minus x minus 3, then you need to find two numbers. You need to split your minus x into two terms. So you need to find two numbers. The sum of the two numbers is minus 1 because I've got minus 1x. And the product, and that's where you have to be careful, the product is 2 times minus 3. So my product is minus 6. So which two numbers do I have? If I want to make minus 6, I could make 1 times minus 6. But if I add 1 and minus 6, I do not get minus 1. Uh, 2 times minus 3. And if I add 2 and minus 3, I get the minus 1 I'm looking for. So yes, those are that's my correct pair of numbers. So I'm going to keep my 2x squared. I'm going to keep my minus 3. I'll just just have a separation here, and I'm going to split up my minus x into a plus 2x and a minus 3x. And I'm going to now factorize into two folds. So the first part, I'm going to look at those first two terms, and I can factorize 2x here. And I'm left with x plus 1. And then I'm going to actually look at the next two terms. Um, so I'm going to go back to those two terms here. And what can I factorize here? Minus 3. Minus 3 times x plus 1. And from here, we have the same common factor, linear factor here, that we can factorize further. So we can now do x plus 1 multiplied by, well, in the first expression, my x plus 1 is multiplied by 2x. And my second uh, part, my x plus 1 is multiplied by minus 3. So I factorize 2x from the first and minus 3 from the second. So I've now factorized my, uh, my quadratic, so I can go back to my original question on the left-hand side. So the f of x, if I want to factorize it fully, I've got my x plus 4, but I can now factorize this quadratic, which is x plus 1, and then 2x minus 3. I'll let you now have a go at the next two parts of uh, the question, and I will actually talk through those with the answers. So from past experience, um, some students don't get the uh, idea of sketching straight away, so I thought I'd better um, record a work solution for this. So part three, I need now to sketch the graph of y equals f of x. What this question is not about is drawing a table of values and putting all the points. This is not what this is about. What you need to do here is a sketch. So a sketch is just giving you an idea of what the graph looks like. So what you're going to need to do is to find uh, all your intercepts and then from here you need to be aware of what the uh, graph would look like. So what we're going to do, we're going to start by doing the y-intercept, because that's really easy. The y-intercept is the value when x equals 0. Well, for that, I would really go back to my initial equation before I factorize it, because if x is 0, then the first term goes, second one is 0, third one is 0, so my y would be minus 12. And that's that part of the question uh, completed. Now, the second part of the question will be we need to look at the other axis. So we need to look now at the um, intercept with the x-axis, so my x-intercept. And the x-intercept, it means that y is equal to 0. So really, I need to solve, oops, solve f of x equals 0. 
So I can use either my first expression, the one that's not factorized, or the second one that is factorized. And here there's no, no hesitation. Of course you are going to use the factorized version. So you need to have x plus 4 and then x minus 1. No, sorry, x plus 1, I'm not reading properly, and then 2x minus 3 equals to 0. So your solution will need to be either you have x plus 4 equals 0, or you're going to have x plus 1 equals 0, or you're going to have a third term, 2x minus 3 equals 0. If x plus 4 is the one that is equals to 0, then you have to have x is minus 4. So one of the solutions is x is minus 4. The second solution is x is minus 1. And the third solution, that gives you 2x equals 3. So x equals 3 halves. You now have the values of where the graph is going to need to cut the intercept. What I recommend you do is you actually just place these points roughly where they would need to be. So roughly I would have probably a minus 4 might be around here and then minus 1 might be around here. And then a 3 half, so that's that's going to be here. So that's going to be my 3 half. Um, and then from here, um, I could play straight away y, my y equals uh, minus 12, actually. But yes, I, I am going to do it. So uh, y equals minus 12. I'm going to put it here. And I now need to actually sketch the graph to show what the graph would look like. So I know it needs to cross at minus 4 and at minus 1 and at 3 halves. And here I probably need to, to cross at minus 12. Um, I also know that it's, uh, it's because it's 2x cubed, it's a positive number of x cubed, um, the graph is going to look like something like that because it's a positive number of x cubed. If it was a negative, then I would start from the top, but here it's positive. So when uh, x takes a, a very small value, uh, so a negative value like minus 100, uh, overall my expression is going to be negative. So I'm going to be arriving from here. And I need to pass through all the points, and I need to make sure that it's a roughly a nice curve. So I turn, and then I go back down, and then I go back down, and then I turn. I try to go through my points. Um, and this gives you roughly the look of the graph. Now, hopefully you have a critical eye, and hopefully you will note that and say, well, hang on, miss, because that... First of all, your minus 12, if minus 1 is here, why is minus 12 j just j just down there? It looks like more like minus 3. Well, no, it's a sketch. So you don't have a scale here. Um, minus 12, what you know is that it's negative. Maybe the scale on the y-axis is a very, very, very short one. You know, you don't know. So to that I will say, um, absolutely not. Now, the second really valid comment is, Miss, you had marked a point here. And actually, you went and crossed the y-axis much further down. Yeah, it's a sketch. So what I would do is I'd take my rubber and I'd cross that one off and I'd place it down there. Am I cheating? You could say I'm cheating a little bit, but remember, it's just the look of the graph. So it's more important to have a smooth graph that looks like what I represented at the top rather than forcing yourself to pass points. And what I would do and, 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 and what I would say and, and do when I sketch graphs is actually quite often I don't place my y-intercept at the beginning. I, I placed it here to, to show all the points. But otherwise, generally, I would put them on the x-axis. I would draw a graph that I know roughly the shape that it needs to have. And then it would allow me to check that my y-intercept matches my, um, my graph. Because if the y-intercept had been 4, you know, <clears throat> that would be a problem because the curve would not be crossing in the positive section of the y-axis. Now, on another point, what if, what if actually you drew a graph like that? So, well, okay, so that, that, what would I comment with that? So, I would just change color. What I would say is, it's overall, it's perfectly fine. Do you match the criteria? You cross at minus 4? Yes. You cross at minus 1? Yes. You cross at 3 half? Yes. Even better than mine, to be honest. Um, obviously, your y-intercept will need to be there. 
you know, where you're crossing. And I, I don't like the way that this tends to, it looks like it's slowing down. So I would much prefer to have it going up faster. But overall, was that red uh, sketch valid? Absolutely. Would it get you all the marks? As long as you put all the values on your axis, your minus 4, your minus 1, your 3 half, and then a minus 12, yes, it would. But minus 12 is too near the origin. Who cares? You don't have a scale. It is a sketch. So hopefully with this in mind, you will start to enjoy sketching graphs a lot more because it just gives you the general view of a graph. Um, now I'm going to let you do part four. Uh, and for part four, I'm not going to record the nation, I'm just going to put the answers.